One of the most extraordinary and incredible stories relating to extraterrestrial visitors occurs in 1938, when the archaeologist Chi Put discovered a series of regularly dug graves and aligned inside artificial caves of the Bayankara Ula Mountains near the Sino-Tibetan border. He found several tombs in an almost inaccessible cave in which lay the remains of the skeletons of strange beings only a little over three feet tall, with thin bones and huge skulls. Next to them were several hundred mysterious gray discs. Each of these artifacts had a hole in the center that made them similar to modern LPS and a series of hieroglyphics that extended from the hole to the perimeter of the disc among decorations that showed small beings combed with helmets, stars and planets. He also found stone objects that contained traces of incongruous metals, perfectly circular and adorned with star symbols and with a tiny spiral writing. It is not until 1962, when a Chinese linguist manages to translate the text of one of the 700 records kept at the Beijing Academy. This translation tells us the story of a group of beings that crashed into Earth 12,000 years ago and were unable to repair their ship. This group was first harassed, because of its strange appearance, by the tribe of hunters who occupied the places but thanks to their peaceful gestures they ended up accepted and living in peace. In 1938 in the Karahula Bayan Mountains, in the Himalayas, on the border of China and Tibet, a team of Chinese archaeologists set out to systematically record a series of interconnected caves. His interest in these places was awakened by the discovery of a series of carefully aligned tombs containing skeletal remains of what must have been an unknown race. Their bodies were small and flimsy, their heads vastly larger than normal heads to the point that it was first believed to have discovered an unknown species of monkeys. But the possibility that monkeys would dig decorated tombs to bury their dead excluded this possibility. Studying one of the skeletons, one of the members of the expedition stumbled upon a disk of stone buried in the floor of the cave. The object evoked a kind of prehistoric phonograph record, a perfectly circular hole at its center in a spiral groove with tiny unknown letters. Nobody could understand the meaning of the text. The disc was labeled and sent in the company of other discoveries towards Beijing where some experts tried to decipher it for 20 years without success. Finally Dr. Tsum Yuan Nui understood this unknown script and began to decipher it. The Beijing Academy of Prehistoric Studies forbade him to mention and publish his work. Although two years later he broke the prohibition. The text told the story of a space probe piloted by the inhabitants of another planet that crashed in the mountains of Bayakarahula. Their peaceful intentions were not immediately understood by the tribe of troglodyte hunters who occupied the places, whom, frightened by their appearance, killed numerous survivors of the accident. They introduced themselves as dropas, and by force of science communication, finally convinced them of their peaceful intentions explaining that they came from the clouds and that they had no means to repair their vehicle or build another one. In 1965, 716 new recorded discs were found in the same caves. The legends of the region mention small yellow men who came from the clouds, with broad heads and flimsy bodies, looking so horrible that they were persecuted and killed. The zone of the caves is still inhabited by two semi-troglodyte tribes known by the name of Han and Dropa or Zopa. Both tribes are very odd-looking, with fragile bodies, a stature that barely surpasses the meter for adults, disproportionate heads, and large blue eyes. As we can see from their features, they are not Chinese or Tibetan features. Dr. Nubi manages to decide for the Dropa stones. The tiny hieroglyphs were so small that they could only read them with powerful magnifying lenses. An expert in deciphering ancient languages, Dr. Nui, worked diligently for many months to decipher the language. Finally, he succeeded. And what he discovered can change the knowledge about the history of humanity. The stones recorded an amazing story, written at least 12,000 years ago by some fantastic people that the world had forgotten. The discs relate the Dropa's trip to Earth and how they crashed during an exploration of the planet. Their spacecraft would be located where later it would be known as the Bayankarahula Mountains, in the Himalayas. The sailors, lost, would have taken refuge in caverns, 
the same ones where the mysterious stones would later be found. After deciphering as many records as he could, Nui wrote a paper on the historical discovery for the Chinese Academy of Prehistory. But the Academy refused to publish them. Their argument was that mankind was not prepared for such a discovery. The Chinese authorities under Mao's rule were also quite explicit in their reaction. The doctor was forbidden to publish his research outside of China or to talk about Dropa stones. Despite the order, Nui shared the information with some close colleagues, and sooner or later a little of the story would leak to the rest of the world. Los Angeles Herald Examine published an article called The Stone Discs of Outer Space, on February 26, 1967. The article noted that some Russian researchers who had been studying some of the Dropa stones. The Russians, the Herald Examine wrote, have examined some discs in a Moscow laboratory, and say they have made two important discoveries. The first is that the discs contain certain traces of metal, in particular cobalt. Secondly, they say that by placing the stones on a special turntable, they reproduced an unusual rhythm, as if an electric charge passed through them. It is not easy to find credible evidence to show that the Dropa stones exist or have existed in the past. Defenders of the story claim that it is the result of a social disruption caused by the Chinese Cultural Revolution in a cover-up conspired by the authorities of that country.